Hockey fans, are you ready to brave the wild? With me, your host, Paladino Joey, or Joey Awajan. Brave the Wild is available on iTunes, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, and Double Twist. Thank you once again for joining me today. Another Thursday morning, another time for some Brave the Wild hockey. Minnesota, well, they played well in all three games. Three games to preview, of course. Review and preview, we'll say. You got the home and home with Nashville. The frustration mounted in a big way with the way both of those games finished. Good goals, I guess, according to everybody. But, um, well, maybe not all the Minnesota Wild fan base, I suppose. But uh, the Calgary game, definitely a beauty. Minnesota ends up getting four points out of a possible six. So I guess it could be worse. Yes, it could be worse, but in a lot of ways I think we deserved a little better. I don't know. I mean, what what do you do? At least we got a point in both of the games, I guess. I mean, you figure maybe you're going to split at home and home. It tends to happen very often in, in uh, situations like that, especially Nashville being a good team. But, well, a lot of us have started to hate Calgary, the whole situation earlier this season. And they started hating us as well with uh, Giordano's injury and all that for Dumba and all that. And then you get the makeup situation and they severely injured Dumba. Giordano misses two games. Dumba's missed months already with a torn pectoral muscle. Took a while for that mystery to be solved where the injury was. Looked like a shoulder. Could have been an elbow tendon. Could have been God knows what. And it ended up being a pectoral, which is, can't imagine how that could feel. Very terrible. Um, then you get a situation with Garnett Hathaway basically slamming Mr. Luke Cunning into the boards, literally could have taken his head off, could have broken the guy's jaw, could have broken several teeth, could have caused a serious concussion, could have broken a shoulder. I mean, you could go on and on. Could have broken the guy's wrist. Maybe, who knows, maybe an awkward angle with the knee. It was a very cheap play, and Garnett Hathaway was uh, ejected from the game, luckily. And the Wild had a five-minute penalty and did nothing with it at the end of the day, which was extremely frustrating. But at the same time, Minnesota coming out with a 4-2 win in Calgary, that felt pretty damn good at the end of the day, I would have to say. Yes, uh, beating Calgary is uh, pretty good. Um, Calgary had been on a 7-game win streak. Not too long before that, they'd been on a 5-game losing streak. So Calgary a bit streaky, but if they're playing up to their game into the postseason, I think Calgary wins the Western Conference. I think they win the Western Conference. I think they're better than Nashville. I think they're better than Winnipeg. Uh, better than Las Vegas, and probably San Jose as well. Uh, Calgary should win the West this year, but then again, it's their streakiness that would be their undoing at the end of the day, I suppose. You get in a bad streak, it's all over, just like that. 4-2, uh, to two, though, situation. I'm happy the Wild, I mean, really, really well-played game. Opportune as well, though, opportunistic, because Mike Smith did not have his best game. Uh, he started the season poorly. He got a lot better, obviously, with uh, Riddich as well, playing fairly well coming in as a backup. He was kind of a minor league in and out AHL guy last year. Got some time between the pipes. Definitely more serious time this year. Then it became more of a platoon situation with Smith and Riddich. A lot of people thinking if the Wild were going to really go downhill and look like a non-playoff team that Devin Dubna could have been a possibility to Calgary. Obviously that didn't happen. Now, Nicholas Backstrom years ago with Calgary uh, and then way, way, way back in the beginning Mike Vernon was taken by Minnesota in the XL and the, uh, what do they call that, the uh, expansion draft. And then we traded Mike Vernon back to Calgary, where he was uh, from originally way back in the day. And they won the Stanley Cup and all that back in 89. Went to the finals, finals when we used to call it that, which sounds better, back in 86. Um, but no, I like to talk about history. <laughs> Sean Monaghan would get his 30th goal. Eric Stahl, a nice beauty from Greenway. That was a great play. I loved it. Uh, Greenway, the patience and all that and getting it to Eric Stahl for his 19th goal of the season. Nice to see Greenway get something going. Uh, Monahan, though, good play from Johnny Gaudreau. That was a great pass, uh, setting up Monahan. Uh, 53rd assist on the season. Giordano, Giordano, 47th assist. Again, the guy's, you know, doing better than Brent Burns this year. He's probably going to win the Norris Trophy, probably, especially with Calgary finishing first place if they have the uh, home ice advantage throughout the uh, Western Conference anyway. Uh, Matt Reed would get his first goal of the season. Nice to see him called up. He had to play because, of course, Parisi banged up in his foot there. Bruised foot situation with Parisi. Luckily, he would come back and score a pretty big shootout goal and be as valuable as he's always been. But Matt Reed, very opportunistic. Again, because Mike Smith, well, you know how Devin Dubnik would come out of the net, make some dumb mistakes and get rid of the puck, and then next thing you know, he's just kind of stuck there and it's too late. Well, that's what happened with uh, Matt Reed. Luckily, he was able to capitalize, and Mike Smith just kind of getting trapped behind the net into the traffic. Um, so, very lucky situation there. No goalie interference of any kind. 
uh, Mike Smith had no business being back there, and he was pretty much stuck behind his own guys, which is, well, can't call goalie interference on your own team. You just give up a goal, and Matt Reed able to get an unassisted goal at his first NHL goal in a little while there for the poor guy. I wish he could be <laughs> at more NHL time. He's doing fantastic in the AHL, to be quite honest. But again, now in his early 30s, unfortunately for Reader. Uh, Ryan Studer was able to rip one. That was the play with Jordan Greenway. I apologize there. Greenway getting a couple assists. Eric Stahl, though, the pass from Zucker was the big play there with Eric Stahl uh, finishing. Putting the Wild up one nothing, which had us all excited. <laughs> a, a rare opening goal for Minnesota. We would not get that in either of the Nashville games. Ryan Suter. It was the patience by Jordan Greenway going down the ice, zipping it to Suter on the high slot. A nice wrister release. Beautiful shot. Uh, seventh uh, goal of the season for Suter. That was a beautiful wrister. Nice release on the play. Kind of a one timer, you could say, but I'd say more of a wrister. But good uh, release, good timing, good good pass by uh, Jordan Greenway. Obviously, got the playmaking skills of a guy who could be in this league and be a factor for many years. Playmaking skills, the strength, everything. Uh, Greenway, there's a reason why he's been in the NHL the entire season. Uh, Hamanek would make it three to two with his sixth goal of the season. Again, you had the uh, Garnet Hathaway situation with Luke Conan, but luckily there he was back on the ice. Not too long after that, maybe 10 minutes later. Obviously, his minutes reduced in Luke Cunning's case. Just imagine if he was out. Oh, my. Because he's had to play uh, second-line center. No Tuka Rask. He's got a in, uh, knee injury. Stepping on a puck earlier. And it's like his 10th game with Minnesota. One freaking point, basically, for Tuka Rask since being with Minnesota in those 10 games. But still, a guy who plays the valuable position of center in... Uh, to, in uh, did I call him Tuka Rask? I hope I didn't. It's Victor Rask. Tuka Rask because it's the goaltender of the Boston Bruins. But uh, <laughs> it is what it is. Luke Cunning having to play second line center, and he's done a pretty good job. Unfortunately, the points haven't been there. That's the sad part. Not as much, but still very solid play from him. If he was out, boy, I mean, what the hell? I mean, what's left? You, you definitely got to go down into, into Iowa to get your next center at that point, because there's not a whole lot left you can do. Uh, Fair is already playing center on the fourth line. Eck is already playing center on the third line, doing a hell of a job there. He is like the perfect third line center right now, but of course he could uh, move up to second line at some point, especially when Quavo retires, which won't be too long from now. Um, you're not seeing the points from Cunning and Eck lately, but you're still seeing good solid play. That's the good part. The little things that don't show up in the score column and all that. Um, something that did show up in the score column, though, Mike Smith was prepared to head off the ice so Calgary could get the extra man, trailing 3-2 to two in the third period, but he never got the chance as Donato was able to drive towards the net and do that nice, strong release on the wrister. Again, very beautiful release. Able to get his fifth uh, straight game with Minnesota. <laughs> fifth straight game with a point. Great goal there by uh, Mr. Ryan Donato. Of course, unfortunately, he would not score another point against Nashville in the, in the up, upcoming games, but hey, we'll take this one at the very least because it gave Minnesota a regulation victory in the Saddle Dome, which is not something that happens very often. Uh, maybe in the early days of Minnesota when Calgary was awful and they were one of the few teams we could beat on a regular basis back when Minnesota was just an expansion team and you're not going to be all that great, but uh, a lot of hardworking players that wanted to stay in the NHL. That's pretty much what it was. A ton of third-line, fourth-line type of guys that desperately wanted to stay in the NHL. Uh, Matt Reed would have probably been one of the better players on the team, to be quite honest, but that's how things go there. Uh, the the Steeler and Brad Hunt combination stayed together this entire week. You got to see absolutely no Batetto anymore, so interesting. He, he's been getting scratched every game this past week, which I'm sure most of us are okay with. Uh, Brad Hunt, very popular, very well-liked, nice player. Obviously, Nick Steeler, extremely valuable as well, a shot-blocking guy, but of course, uh, yeah, he, he gets... he. He sacrifices his body every single game. Uh, Brodeen got four blocks in this game. Spurgeon's obviously always spectacular, getting down on the ice and stopping those shots as well. Uh, Spurgeon was a plus three along with Suter in this one. That combination on the ice was in pretty good place. Uh, Sealer, though, obviously, you know, he's not going to score a lot of points. He'd been off a bit, but he's he's been slightly better. Still better than Botetto because he's not making the weird mental errors. And unfortunately, Brad Hunt unable to pick up any points this week. But a nice, solid win, nonetheless, in Calgary, Alberta. And then you get the classic kind of college-type atmosphere, home-and-home -home type of games with uh, Nashville. Minnesota losing in the shootout in both cases. 
with, uh, oh boy, Ryan Johansson putting some, making some nice plays, some nice stick handling, and kind of bending the rules a bit. Uh, he did not break the rules, he bent the rules. And it's frustrating, it's cheap, it's obnoxious, but, you know, in life, that's how people are. I mean, anytime there's a way to kind of bend the rule without breaking it, it seems like that's what people do. That's how life is in sports, in at the workplace, which is really annoying, but it is what it is, <laughs> and everything. Uh, but, hey, give them an inch, they'll take a mile, I guess, and that's what Ryan Johansson did in both of these games. Um, he never completely stopped moving. That second one, it really almost looked like he stopped moving, but it was like barely. Uh, great stick handling, great play, but extremely frustrating. Um, Mikhail Granlin and Kevin Fiala playing against their former team just a game in already into their career. Two, uh, two games into their little career with their new teams. Hopefully Fiala ends up being a part of Minnesota hockey lore for many, many years. Granlin will always be a part of Minnesota hockey lore for many years. Uh, it's nice that there was a little tribute there, and uh, he had some great moments. The 2014 playoffs against Colorado, he made some nice blocked shots, and he scored some goals, assisted, and he's made some spectacular passes over the years. Who could forget the hat trick against Vancouver years ago when it's like all of a sudden this guy can score now, and it was just shocking. And then he had 26 goals that year, and that was Boudreaux's first year with Minnesota, and Granlin 26 goals. Who could forget that season? It's too bad it never really came, uh, continued in that direction because I thought Granlin was going to be an 85-point player with like 25, 30 goals a year. But I, I don't know. I mean, such had been the history of a lot of the guys that were drafted in the Chuck Fletcher era that were just afraid to shoot the puck for some reason. Um, Zucker wasn't afraid to shoot the puck, and then he changed, I guess. Um, and it's like, I understand you want to make a play, but sometimes you're the one that needs to make the... You I mean, sometimes the play is you. You don't need to make a play for someone else. You need to make a play for yourself. And it's not even about yourself. It's because the play is already there. It's your opportunity to shoot the puck. You have the lane. You have the uh, uh, line of sight. And you don't and, and, and you don't take the shot. And it's just the strangest thing ever. And that's how soccer has kind of changed a bit the last few years. But um, <clears throat> luckily, he's been significantly better. And he's been on a point streak past few games. He would get his 17th goal of the season. But once again, Minnesota giving up the uh, the early lead. Unfortunately, Nick Bonino, Bonino with his 15th goal of the season. But then late in the second period after some nice opportunities, both great spectacular games by Stalock and Zorro. So we're just pitching shutouts throughout the game here. Now, of course, it wasn't a shutout in terms of Stalock, but he was. it was as if he was. You know what I mean? He was spectacular behind... Uh, he was spectacular between the pipes. Uh, awesome throughout the entire game. Uh, obviously playing the puck well, but making big stop after big stop. He would face quite a few in the game, but he would stop just about everything coming his way until very late when, uh, oh, just heartbreaking situation there as Philip Forsberg would get that moment. He would get that split second where the door opened and uh, <laughs> Stalock just wasn't ready for it because of the situation. Good puck movement by Nashville, and uh, again, Minnesota unable to get the puck out of the zone. Great play, though. Ryan Suter to Zucker. An awesome play, indeed. Suter kind of setting him up there, and Zucker finishing his 17th goal of the season to make it a 2-1 to lead. Uh, again, Eric Fair, though, late in the second period, made a great block. I mean, that was awesome. Just knocked the puck away. <laughs> he just got in the way, knocked the puck. It was sailing forward, and next thing you know, Fair was one-on-one. -on -one. With, Jar with with Jaros and ended up finishing it for his sixth goal of the season. Uh, Fair would also score again <laughs> in the next game of a beautiful feed from Felino from behind the net. It's kind of Zucker and Granlin style there. Um, you got to love that. But Forsberg again, uh, Philip Forsberg again, again, not Peter Forsberg, all, the, all these years later, uh, would finish kind of almost like backdoor situation, but really it was more of a rebound and a pass type of situation. Roman Josie. And ended up with his 38 assists of the year. Uh, Kyle Turris would have multiple opportunities. You thought that <laughs> you thought that Nashville was going to take the lead and win the game with some of those plays by Turris, but he was unable to finish. Uh, Kevin Fiala would have some spectacular plays in this game that ended up not being goals. Luckily, the next game you'd see him break loose, and that was awesome. You had a feeling there was a multi-goal game coming from Kevin Fiala uh, with the way he was moving with the puck in this game. This is when I first noticed Kevin Fiala, because the Calgary game, you, you can only notice so much. It was his first game with Minnesota. You know, I mean, sometimes you get lucky, like Ryan Donato obviously was a factor immediately and all that. He was a guy that needed to be turned loose because he was stuck in the AHL, where... <clears throat> 
Fiala's been in the NHL all season. And, you know, 64 games at the time coming into Minnesota. So it was a little different. Where Donato was a little bit hungrier. But in this game, you're seeing a little bit of that Marion Gabrick flash from Kevin Fiala. Where he just takes off. I mean, he explodes. There is a little extra in Kevin Fiala's game. Uh, especially with his skating and all that. His skating and his moves. His, his elusive moves and all that. He looks like uh, the kind of guy, if he can get it all together, he could be a franchise uh he could literally be a franchise left winger for Minnesota. I truly believe that. I saw Marion Gabrick in... I did. I saw Marion Gabrick in Kevin Fiala with some of those moves. The explosiveness and uh, that burst he has. See, Jason Zucker has speed. But Fiala, there's a little something extra. There's something extra. You can tell. See, Zucker is the kind of guy, sure, he's got that speed and he's a, a capable scorer, right? Fiala could be that kind of player. And when... Paul Fenton was talking all glowingly about Kevin Fiala coming into the, uh, you know, after the trade, the whole post-trade press conference and all that, trade deadline press conference and all that, uh, media gathering. The way he spoke about Kevin Fiala, you think he's talking about uh, Mario Lemieux or something. I mean, it was crazy. But, hey, maybe. Maybe there is something. I don't know about Lemieux or anything. Obviously, (laughs) Mario Lemieux, by the time he was 22 years old, was already like a 100-plus point type of player. So that's out of the question. But Kevin Viola, though, there is a little bit of that Marion Gabrick explosion to his game. And it's like he's going to he's gonna, he's gonna break loose at some point, and luckily he would the next night and some, and some great plays. Unfortunately, again, this one went to the shootout. Minnesota would get some opportunities in overtime, including Fiala and others. But uh, Minnesota unable to finish in the overtime period. Uh, you got to see Parisi save our asses. <laughs> After Ellis would score, Parisi with a great play. Just the patience, and he's, he, he slowed down a little bit, but nothing like Forsberg. Great puck handling, and was able to pinch it through five-hole on Josie. And then next thing you know, Forsberg comes in. I swear, Forsberg. Johansson comes in, slows down significantly, just kind of gliding, gliding, no more movement with his feet and all that, into uh, Stalock. And this one, I think, was more egregious than the uh, other one with Dubnik. Because, but then again, either one of these could have been called no goal. This this one, I think, was... I think Forsberg... I keep calling him Forsberg. Johansson pushed... I think Johansson pushed Alex Dalek's pad when you watch the replay. I think he did. I, I really do. But unfortunately, the goal was allowed right away, and the, the uh, National Predators would escape Minnesota with the victory. We get one point out of it. Woohoo! At the end of the day, uh, great play by Parisi, but um, unfortunately, Forsberg would get credited with the goal. I keep calling him Forsberg. I'm going crazy. Ryan Johansson would get credited with the goal. Forsberg is the main player. Obviously, Pika Supan is obviously a big name and all that as well, but he's missed a ton of time this year. Again, the Calgary game was on the second. Uh, the next game was on the third, of course, Nashville Predators. Minnesota had a hell of a time getting back. So the fact that Minnesota hung in there and all that, that was good. Unfortunate, though, that we couldn't hold on to the lead down the stretch of that with about four minutes remaining, where this time it is Forsberg was able to punch it through in a situation where the puck was just bouncing around and Forsberg able to finish uh, with Stalock out of position because it's just kind of not a whole lot you can do. You can't be in two places at once. A couple of days later into Nashville, very, very, very entertaining game. Kevin Fiala officially showing that spark that he has. A five to four, well, four to four, the game would go into uh, overtime and all that. But uh, Fiala scoring a couple of goals in this game. But once again, very, very early Nashville scoring. Not even two minutes into the game, and it's like extremely frustrating there. Almost a whole period later, Kevin Fiala, though, forcing a turnover intercepting the play. Greg Pattern did, still found a way to get an assist on this one. I'm not sure exactly how, but Fiala with a great play and a great move and the release. See, I mean, there's multiple talents with this guy. Obviously, the skating, the explosiveness, the moves, and then the release. The timing of the release, the placement of the shot that Kevin Fiala has is really something to see uh, multiple times in this game. It's like Fiala looks like the kind of guy who could really be a spectacular player. If he truly, truly wants to be Fiala is going to be an all-star left winger for many years. A franchise left winger for the Minnesota Wild, I truly believe. If he wants it. If he wants it. Um, again, great play. Uh, Brian Boyle 
ultimately again scoring on the power play back and forth. Uh, you saw Pontus Aberg score his 12th goal of the season and first at Minnesota. Another great play by Jordan Greenway at the end of the day, but Pontus Aberg with the speed and the release on his shot from a pretty decent distance from Pekka Rene. You got to see the main goalies this time around, Dubnik and Pekka Rene, and funny, it's a much higher scoring game <laughs> because you could argue both of these goalies are kind of, in a way, in a strange way, they feel old and tired in some of these games. <laughs> Pecorino is getting a bit older, though, unfortunately. And then Dubnik, it's not like he's old, but he's aging. And, yeah, obviously so many games. It's like he's aging in terms of how many games he's played the past four years. Um, but, obviously, Dubnik, one of the best goalies in the NHL the last four years since joining the Wild. So, that is what that is. Uh, Pontus Aberg, though, very nice release on his shot. Obviously, the ongoing conversation with Pontus Aberg is he doesn't work hard, but... You could say in these two games in Nashville, he did. I thought Aberg did a pretty damn good job in these two games in Nashville. And that beautiful release. He almost looked like Kevin Fiala on that one. I ah, really appreciate what he was able to do as he continues to get his career high. Now 12th goal in the NHL in a single season. So good for Pontus Aberg there. Hopefully he'll be a better factor going into next season. Would be nice to see Aberg become a 20-goal type of guy. But uh, don't, don't hold your breath on that one. Uh, again, Felino, beautiful pass to Eric Fair, classic again, classic wild hockey the past couple of years. Eric Fair, six, second goal in two games, which the Nashville Predators here, back-to-back -back games. You feel all good about it? Early in the third period, we're up 3-2 to two after all that hell. Are, are, are we actually going to win in Nashville again? Wouldn't that be awesome? And then Roman Josie, just 30 seconds later, just skates right past Pontus Aberg. So again, there, there goes the frustration. You're all excited about Aberg with that great play. But uh, this is where Aberg didn't look all so hot defensively. Roman Josie just outskating him, just making a move right past him. Oh, God, very frustrating. <laughs> I don't even know how to make a comparison. Almost looked like a basketball play where a guy crosses somebody up and just kind of gets a first step on him and goes right past him to the hoop. And that's basically what happened here with uh, Roman Josie going right past Pontus Aberg and just kind of having his way, moving towards Dubnik and finishing. A example of a defenseman stepping up in the right time, the right place. And that's what Roman Josie did here, his uh, 15th goal of the season. And, of course, he's one of those 50, 60-point defensemen who is a definite franchise type of player. Nashville has a lot of stars. They really do. But I come out of this weekend hating the National Predators because of, again, freaking Ryan Johansson's cheap-ass plays. You wish there was some kind of a shot clock in these uh, shootouts. Some type of a shot clock that would prevent guys from kind of bending the rules a bit, that type of thing. But I don't know. It, it'd be tough to do. It'd be really tough to do. Uh, tough to avoid him being able to do that. Uh, it's a great play. Hopefully, <laughs> next time around, Dubnik and Stalock aren't going to fall for it. And they're going to poke poke check that puck away. I, I, think, I think that's the play to make there. Um, unfortunately, though, he froze both of the goalies, did uh, Mr. Ryan Johansson. I'm guessing that's the next thing you would do is, uh, yeah, obviously there's a fear that he's going to make a move, you're going to miss on the poke check, and he'll get right past you. That's obviously the fear that he's that he maybe trying to goad you into that, but if you're quick enough, if you're quick enough, like like a ninja, you just poke check that puck away, and the, the guy never gets a shot off, and that's that's what you're, you're hoping to accomplish in that situation, and that's pretty much would be my strategy. <sighs> it's like, if you could do it over, that would be my strategy, that type of thing, but we all like to do things over, don't we? Um, Arvinson, this was a bad goal given up. Again, uh, just about five minutes later, 28th goal of the season. Another, I mean, there are so many good players on Nashville, like I keep saying. Brian Boyle, I mean, he's a, he's a third-line player, and he's got 16 goals in the season. Craig Smith's got 17 goals in the season. Who talks about Craig Smith? Nobody talks about Craig Smith. He's like a power forward in the NBA years ago. Victor Arvidsson, 28 goals. He might get 40 this year. P.K. Supan, yeah, who, who, who forgot about that guy with all the... All the noise he makes, right? Um, Brian Boyle ended up getting credit for that goal. A lot of us saw it as P.K. Subban on the release. But again, he created a goal there. Regardless if it was Subban's goal or not, he ended up creating, because of that powerful shot, Brian Boyle ended up getting the deflection at the end of the day for his 16th goal of the season. But no, Victor Arvidsson, 28th goal of the year, getting it to Devin Dubnik between the chest and the shoulder and, 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 and the arm, so to speak. I don't know how that one got in extremely frustrating, but hey, that's why you put the puck on net, because goalies aren't perfect. Goalies are human. Um, he was maybe a half a second late on it, Dubnik, closing in on that puck. That's why I was able to squeeze through. That's my guess. I, just a half second late, and that's how it is. I mean, you can't be a half second late, I guess, and that's unfortunate. 28th goal of the season for Arvidsson. 
and then you get Kevin Fiala off the face off. That was a beauty. <laughs> I don't even. I mean, it was so quick. It was so bleeping quick. Stahl wins the face off. Parisi to Fiala. It was just. Boom, boom, boom. It was literally again like a half second type of play. Fiala ties it up. Minnesota had just gone to the man advantage. Luckily, they were in natural zone to be able to set this play up, and that was beautiful. Just the release, the quickness. It was. Like, I, I don't even know how to compare it to. Like, a video game at best. I mean, it was a spectacular play. Fiala, great release on the shot. 12th goal this season. And extremely hard to believe he only has 12 goals on the season. So, um, nice, fun week. Unfortunately, extremely frustrating finishes to both of these games, which made me sick. The most annoying thing of all, see, you're pissed off about these stupid Ryan Johansson goals and all that, and you hope you wish the goalie could maybe poke check the puck away, this and that. Um, but it's like you sit here at the end of the day and you come out feeling a little better. So, yep, this, this was the game where Botato did play, yes. And uh, Botato had a horrible turnover in this game. And then luckily, though, again, uh, Felino made a good uh, back check on the player uh, on the player with the interception there. I'm forgetting exactly who the player was, but it was a big play. I think it was Arvidsson. I can't remember exactly, though, and that's my mistake there. But again, Botato, another horrible turnover. See, it's like, again, that's why you'd rather have Sealer out there. Even though sealer has been off the past month or so, he's not been in as good as you'd like. He's still better than Botato. And again, another example, that could have been a goal, if not for a spectacular play by Felino in the game. But um, what was I getting to? Uh, the frustration with the shootout is, yes, you could get pissed off at... The, the goal, this and that, it's cheap, it's this and that, it's bending but not breaking the rules. But then you get, the fact of the matter is, you had four attempts. Four freaking attempts on the shooter, and you scored on zero of them. That's enough for me to say, hey, you know what, it's kind of your own fault there. I mean, luckily Dubnik stopped everything except that bleeping Johansson play. But, and again, Johansson's goal did not win the game for Nashville. It was the stops by Pecorini and the failure by Minnesota to score. Johansson scored the goal and ended up being the winner because we didn't score on multiple opportunities after that. Johansson was just the second guy for Nashville. Minnesota had four opportunities to either tie it up or take the lead, whatever, and Minnesota did not do that. So I come out with uh, major frustration with that. So let's pass out the awards for the week. The Neil Broughton slash Mike Badano Award for this week. Kevin Fiala. No, I mean, uh, almost. I mean, he was really good in the... Uh, he... he He's making me feel good, I, I have to say. I want to give it to Jordan Greenway. I think he had a really nice week. I like the plays. I like the setup and all that. Kevin Fiala gets honorable mention mostly for this game. Eric Fier, Fier deserves an uh, honorable mention. He's been wonderful the past couple of games. A couple of great plays in both of these. Felino as well. I mean, multiple guys. That fourth line is just the bomb. I don't like J.T. Brown very much. I don't think he really factors in on hardly anything. He's not big enough to, to hit anybody hardly. Um, I don't see him creating a whole lot of turnovers, though I'm sure he does on occasion. Not too many. He'll he'll hit people, but he can't really knock them off the puck all that great. And, well, he was a good scorer in college, but he hasn't really done anything in the NHL at all. Uh, he's a great scorer in the AHL, but, again, I don't think he's NHL material. So, But outside of uh, Fair and Foligno are freaking awesome. I just love those guys. I hope they're both back for a long time. Uh, I'd like to keep Eric Fair. Obviously, Foligno is inked for a while. And that's fine. It's not the cheapest contract in the world, but he is a he's a hell of a player, boy. <laughs> For what he is, he's a hell of a player. Um, but no, I'm going to give it to... Boy, it's tough. <laughs> it, it, it could be any of those guys. Any of those three guys. Greenway, Felino, Fair. Love them all. Um, I really like the way Greenway played this past week. So I suppose I'll give it to him. Uh, the nice setups and all that and the opportunities that he would get. Nothing spectacular. No huge breakout game, but still very solid play. Three assists in three games for Jordan Greenway. Um, awesome. Actually, four assists in, in three games. So great uh, great plays by Greenway setting up others. Suter and the like. So there it is. The uh, James Shepard Memorial. Mm, it's I don't know. It's always going to be potato, isn't it? Because these just stupid plays and all that. And the, the stupid shootouts. And really, in general, the wild in the shootout in, in, in Nashville. To fail to score on any of the opportunities. Some of the times you're trying to get too cute, trying to do too much, and you run out of time. And, well, there's just nothing there. I mean, that, uh, that shootout chance by Donato was not good. He, he tried to do too much, and he was also coming in a little bit too fast. 
And Pecorine basically had to do nothing. It was it was BS. He just had to go, boop, you know, just kind of just put his glove down, basically. That's basically all he had to do. It was lame sauce. And that's why I come out feeling kind of sour after that last Nashville game. Kind of salty. I'm feeling a little salty after the Nashville game. So with that said, we'll take a break. We'll preview three games and then look at the prospects and wrap things up again for another week in segment number two. Back here on Brave the Wild. Segment number two, got to preview three games of Florida two-step and then the San Jose Sharks up and coming, hosting the Sharks. A couple of games in Florida, though. It's a two-step. It's a back-to-back situation at Tampa Bay. Oh, boy. One of the best teams in the league. Florida, not so good, but a snake bit the Wild over the years. And then the San Jose Sharks, who the Wild have mostly owned the past couple of years here with uh, Chris Stortz. My good buddy there, uh, who is a part of the Teal Town podcast. He's a producer and a a host as well. Major shout out to Chris Stortz and the Teal Town podcast. Beautiful show and uh, highly recommended. Chris Stortz, one of the great guys out there as well from Northern California. We've exchanged some craft beer over the years. Some good stuff. Gosh, that Ale Smith is awesome. And I've sent him Sterly. So I like how Sterly is one of the most, you know, one of the most famous beers in this part of the part of the country, and then Ale Smith coming out of California. God, they have so many good beers in California. It's unbelievable. Ale Smith, Sierra Nevada, to name a few. Sierra Nevada, just, oh, I, I adore it. So let's keep moving. Tampa Bay Lightning. Not sure what beer they have down in that area. Florida, you don't really hear about it too much down there, but I can imagine they can grow some nice hops in that part of the country as well. What the hell am I talking about? I'm talking about the Tampa Bay Lightning. They're the best team in the league. They don't care about hops right now, but maybe they'll be... Uh, Celebrating quite a bit in uh, late June, possibly in the mid, well, early to mid June, they'll be doing a lot of celebrating. There's a pretty good chance of the Tampa Bay Lightning will win the Stanley Cup this year. Uh, Andre Vasilevsky is a, you know, he's one of the best goalies in the league. He may win that award this year. Uh, we'll see what happens at that. Uh, Kucherov, 108 points. He might win the Hart Trophy. Braden Point, 81 points. Braden Point, 81 points. Steven Stamkos has been looked on as a franchise player over the years. He was disappointing in the Stanley Cup final. And most of the postseason in 2015 when the Lightning went to the final only to run into the frickin' Blackhawks, which pissed me off. And all, all of us here in Minnesota that were not cheering for them. Tyler Johnson from Minnesota, 20, uh, 39 points on the season. JT Miller from the New York Rangers a year ago. Minnesota was a possible trade uh, destination for him, but ultimately wound up with Tampa. I'm sure he's fairly happy with his uh, location at the end of the day. <laughs> but uh, Tampa, though, looking absolutely great. And, of course, uh, the Vizina Trophy is what I do believe Mr. Uh, <laughs> Vasilevsky has a chance of. So many trophies out there, and it's like my mind's going blank. Oh, that's what it was. Yeah, the Vizina Trophy, where my mind catches it after a second there, thinking about it and looking at all these other players. So many players. Dan Girardi, also a former New York Ranger. One guy after another. Obviously, minimal minutes for Girardi, but still a big factor. For Tampa, Kucherov, 108 points, though 31 of them uh, goals. Braden Point with 37 goals. Stamkos with 34 goals. Tyler Johnson with 22 goals. I could go on forever. It's the best team in the league. They score, they stop, they do everything. Uh, Vasilevsky, 2.24 goals against average. Save percentage, 93.1. Just unbelievable overall team. Again, I'll be, in a lot of ways, I'll be rooting for them because, well, are you going to root for the Western Conference? If it's Calgary, maybe. For in, in my eyes, most of you probably would hate that. But, I don't know, are you going to cheer for, like, Nashville in the Stanley Cup Final after what we went through this past week? No. Go Lightning, man. Kill them. And who's won the West? Who's won the Stanley Cup the last couple of years? The Eastern Conference. It's been a while. I mean, Chicago was the last Western Conference team to win the Stanley Cup. Before that, it was the Los Angeles Kings. And we're talking 2010 here, folks. 2000. Damn. 2009. Pittsburgh. Wow, the last Western Conference team to win the Stanley Cup. It's like you sit down and you think about other than Chicago or Los Angeles. You sit down, you wrap your brain around this. The Detroit Red Wings, 2008, and they're not a Western Conference team anymore. So, okay, uh, that's kind of weird. So I guess uh, 2007, the Anaheim Ducks. The Anaheim Ducks are the last legitimate uh, Western Conference team who is still in the Western Conference other than Chicago, Los Angeles, 2007. 
So it's generally been dominated by the East, other than, again, Chicago, L.A. So what the hell am I even saying? Chicago, L.A. dominated in a big way. Tampa Bay is going to win the game, unfortunately. Um, even though Minnesota's had some great games against this team. Minnesota did beat Tampa Bay in Tampa Bay last year. It was like a 2-1 to one effort. Great game by Devin Dubnik down the stretch last season. The Buccaneers. No, the Buccaneers. The Lightning have won four out of their last five. Uh, they beat the LA Kings 4-3. to three. Jonathan Quick has had an awful season, by the way. God, he's terrible. I finally cut him from fantasy. I just cut him. Cut him. I mean, he's terrible. I, I, it's sad. Maybe next year. Better luck next year, and probably on a different team, unfortunately. Uh, two days later, the Lightning beat the Rangers in New York. That was a nice one. On the 27th, the 28th of February, the Boston Bruins beat the Tampa Bay Lightning in a back-to-back situation. 4-1, to one. nice shutout, or nice shutdown job by Tuka Rask and the Boston Bruins there. The best versus the worst, Ottawa slammed by Tampa on March the 2nd, 5-1, to one. and then the Winnipeg Jets take it to the chin, 5-2. to two in Tampa Bay. Minnesota is the next opponent for the Tampa Bay Lightning, and of course that is tonight, Thursday night, the 7th of March. I think the Tampa Bay Lightning win the game, but I expect a fairly, I expect it to be fairly low scoring. Love the way Dubnik has been playing, though it wasn't so great against Nashville, I'd have to say. Some crappy goals, but you look at all the numbers on this team, and it just spells Stanley Cup, and for their sake, I hope they get it. Other than, you know, I I hope they get it. If it's not us, I hope they get it. I mean, go go get them, Tampa. I don't want to see Washington win again. I, I don't like the Washington Capitals. I don't like them. I wasn't cheering for them last year either. I, w- I really wanted Vegas to win. I really wanted Nashville to beat Pittsburgh. I'm sorry, Chris Porter, if he's listening. One of the other great Chris's out there. He's, he's spent time in Northern Cal. He's in Idaho now. But San Jose Sharks, Pittsburgh Penguins more than the Sharks. Yeah, I generally actually have cheered for the uh, West lately because I, I didn't want Pittsburgh to win or Washington. Tampa Bay is number one in goals, fourth in goals against. You'd think they'd be first in goals against, but no, they're fourth. Uh, the best power play in the league and the best penalty kill in the league. Again, wrap your head around that. Best power play and best penalty kill. Special teams. You're going to get killed by this team if you make a mistake. You'll get beat by the power play, and if you're on the power play, well, chances are you're not going to score. Um, awesome, awesome team. Tampa Bay Lightning, 51-12. and 12. They have 106 points on March the 7th. That is nuts. They look like I don't even know who to compare them to right now. Like Detroit years ago. I mean, they they, they really do. And we're talking years ago. Look at Detroit. 56 points. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Tampa has more than doubled Detroit's points this year. Wow, Detroit really isn't good. They're 10 games under 500. Detroit really isn't good. It's, it's like we're talking 1980s here. Detroit 70s and 80s. Last time Detroit looked like this. It's It's weird. It's really weird. Remember how every year it was like 89 until 2017, I believe, they made the playoffs? It's pretty wild. 89, like 1989. Some of you weren't even born then. I remember 89 pretty well, but uh, yeah. Tampa Bay wins the game 2-1, to 3-1 to one type of situation, 3-2. to two. Most likely guy to score for Minnesota. Let's go with Zach Parisi. I think he'll score against the Tampa Bay Lightning. You could even say Eric Stahl again, but I'm obsessed with saying Eric Stahl against Eastern Conference teams. I don't know what it is, but it's Eric Stahl. Uh, if he does score, though, it's his 20th goal of the year. Let's go with Zach Parisi against the Tampa Bay Lightning. And let's finally move forward. Florida Panthers. I had a lot to say about that team. This team, not so much. Back-to-back situation. I think Tampa wins against Minnesota. Maybe Minnesota beats Tampa in some kind of crazy thing. And then finds a way to lose against this Florida team who's, you know, they're not that bad, but they're not good. They're not good. Um, they're two games above 500. They're kind of like us, actually. <laughs> they're just a little bit worse. Uh, decent penalty kill. Very good power play. 11th penalty kill in the league. Third power play in the league. So the way Minnesota's penalty kill has played of late, watch out. That's all I got to say about that. Uh, try to stay out of the bleeping box, as Bruce Boudreaux might say. Stay out of the effing box. And you might have a chance. Uh, they're fourth in goals for, but their goals against is awful. 26th in the league. That's how you're going to beat Florida. That's how Minnesota beat Florida earlier this year, or at least they tried to. No, they did. Uh, James Reimer, three goals against. Roberto Luongo is way past his prime. He is the only shutout for Florida. He's got to be pushing 40. In fact, he is by now. Um, 3.31 goals against average. Or 1-3, pardon me. But both of them are, are uh, allowing over three goals a game. Definitely got some scores and some talented players on this Florida roster on the uh, offensive side. Mike Hoffman with 30 goals on the year, 59 total points. Alexander Barkov, Alexander Barkov has 68 points on the season. The big problem with Florida, though, everybody's a minus. Everybody. Jonathan 
Herbido is one of the best players in the league. He had one of those spectacular goals last year, crossing up literally like if it was a basketball play. He looked like freaking uh, Russell Westbrook crossing somebody up out there. Uh, great play by Jonathan Herbido on uh, Nate Prosser last year. He's only got 18 goals this year, but uh, definitely a playmaking center, second line center behind Markov there, who's uh, the best player on Florida this year overall. Uh, Hoffman, though, obviously, obviously got a ton of talent. Uh, Keith Yandel. An awesome defenseman, 43 points on the season, or 43 assists, 52 total points of his nine goals. Dandanov, 49 points. Wow, I mean, there's a lot of offense on this club. Vatrano, <laughs> Frank Vatrano, uh, more of those goal sniper type of guys, kind of the zucker of the team. Inconsistent, streaky kind of a guy, 20 goals, only 14 assists. Kind of, uh, again, like a zucker, maybe Fiala, if Fiala struggles. Uh, Vincent Kretschuk has been an awesome player, but he's missed a ton of time this year, unfortunately for him. Obviously, he's been a valuable player for Florida in the past. More of a veteran guy, though, in that case. There's a lot of minuses, though. Uh, Barkov is minus 17. Huberto is minus 21. Mike Hoffman, the former uh, Ottawa Senator, minus 20. Keith Yandel, minus 18. Dandanov, minus 14. Mike Matheson, who's another defenseman, is a minus 26. So, there's going to be some goals. The, uh, Minnesota needs to win this hockey game. Plain and simple. They've uh, Florida's lost five in a row at the bare minimum. Losing to Arizona, who's hanging on to that uh, ninth slash eighth spot. They're trying to make the playoffs, boy. Arizona, nice resurgence this year. They beat Florida in Arizona 4-3. to three. The Vegas Golden Knights took care of business 6-5. to five. Boy, that's a lot of goals given up by Vegas, but they still come out victors. Carolina um, beats Florida. 4-3, to three. Ottawa, 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 Ottawa beats Florida. Mike Hoffman's former team, 4-3, to three, uh, three to 2 and then the Pittsburgh Penguins, who are always hanging around for that Stanley Cup, March the 5th, most recently, 3-2 to two, loss for Florida. They lost all five of those games. They will go to Boston and lose that. They'll host the Minnesota Wild and hopefully not end their losing streak. Hopefully the Florida Panthers end their losing streak against Detroit the next night, if, if anything. And then they get a few games off to head to San Jose, which will be another loss. Um, both teams will be on a back-to-back. So there's no whining and complaining that it's a back-to-back and Florida's fresh, and that's why Florida beat the Wild. Minnesota needs to go out there and get the job done. Uh, I suspect Dumnik against Tampa and Mr. Stalock against Florida. Please, Stalock is a good goaltender. He's a little crazy sometimes, but he, he doesn't mean it, right? Uh, the one thing that does scare me, Florida, is capable of scoring at a very high level. But on the other end, let's put the puck in the net, Minnesota, period. Um, no question about it. Kevin Fiala may have a multi-point game in this one. I think he's going to. I, would, I wouldn't I would be surprised if Kevin Fiala has another two goals. I'm going to pick Kevin Fiala to score against the Florida Panthers at the end of the day. Minnesota wins the game 5-3 to three over the Florida Panthers. High-scoring performance, Kevin Fiala, multiple goals. It's going to be a good night. Spurgeon, I could expect him getting multiple points, maybe two assists and a goal. I have a feeling Spurgeon's going to have a three-point game, something like that. It's going to be a really good one for him. Love the way Suter's been playing offensively, and defensively, he's gotten stronger and stronger as well. Um, Spurgeon is the most valuable player on this team, I'd have to say. I mean, he's my favorite player as well, uh, and there's a reason for it. I love Jared Spurgeon so much. Uh, but I do think Kevin Fiala is going to score for sure against the Florida Panthers. That's just, you know, that's just a feeling I got going into this one. The cool part about the Thursday game, nope, nope. What am I looking at? I thought there was an NBC game. Nope, it's the Sharks. Okay, that'll be cool. That's the next one coming up. But Minnesota wins 5-3 to three over the Panthers. San Jose Sharks in Excel Energy Center. It'll be on national television. Chris Storch, best of luck to you. And a uh, hell of a team you have there once again. Very good team, obviously. Way better than the Wild right now. Um, Minnesota's had some nice success against this team, but I don't know. Minnesota hasn't been playing so hot at home, and I was bragging and going crazy about Mark Giordano, but uh, Brent Burns is still ahead of him. He is still ahead of him with 72 points. 72 points. Brent Burns might have 90 points this year. 72 points for Brent Burns. 59 assists. Wow, that guy is just crazy. He looks like he looks like the freaking he, he looks like a freaking yeti, but man, he's a hell of a player. He's only a plus twelve. You think he'd be like a plus forty the way he's playing this year? But uh, and the fact that the Sharks are a pretty decent team. There's a lot of old guys on the roster, but uh, Thomas Hurdle's finally starting to get over the hurdle, so to speak, because he'd struggled forever. I know, lame pun, but I had to say it. Joe Thornton is Mister Ancient, Mister Methuselah in the NHL, along with Matt Cullen. But Thornton's been uh, around. 
uh, quite a while. Obviously, he's been a hell of a player for a while. Uh, Colin has been in the league one year longer. He started in 96, if I remember correctly. Unbelievable how long Matt Collins has been around. Man, it's just unbelievable. Matt Collins is ancient, 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 ancient. Um, Thornton, you're younger than Colin, which ain't much. Uh, 38 points on the season in the 57 games. He's missed some time. Obviously, and you're that age, you better be careful. Uh, Eric Carlson's missing some time now with a groin injury. Unfortunately for him, I scooped him up in fantasy. He'd been struggling, and now he's he's getting the assists. He's not scoring, but he always magically seems to score a goal against Minnesota. God, and he did, remember, last time around, only three goals on the season. I'm guessing Carlson will not be available. It's one of those nagging injuries they're going to want to hold off on. Uh, he was He came back from it, and then he left the game earlier last week, so unfortunately for Carlson, he's missed some time. He's got 52 games on the season. Total missing uh, 14 games overall, not just for that groin injury, but other situations, but Thomas Hurdle now 58 points in 61 games. He's really starting to come around. Remember, he had that spectacular hat trick a few years ago, and everybody's like, oh, oh my God, and then he had like 38, 40-point seasons. Well, now he might be on his way to his first 70-point season, so good for Thomas Hurdle. He's going to get 30 goals more than likely here at 29 Second on the team behind Joe Pavlovsky, who's got who's 34 years old already. 36 goals on the season. 20, uh, 61 points, 25 assists is what I was trying to say. But uh, an amazing season by Brent Burns. Remember earlier in the year, he wasn't scoring a whole lot. And the next thing you know, he started scoring. It was just all assists, just like Carlson. Now he's got 13 goals on the year. Offensively, there is nobody better than Brent Burns. Nobody. And he does lead the San Jose Sharks in blocks. So you got to factor that in. Oh, no, nope, Justin Braun is a couple more. <laughs> Justin Braun, one of those. Uh, yep, he's, he's basically the Knicks dealer. The uh, third pairing down there for the uh, San Jose Sharks. He definitely pays his dues. Uh, Logan Couture also with 59 points on the season. A very productive club offensively. Evander Kane, 51 points, 27 of them goals. A very, very, very strong team offensively. One of the best in the league. They're third in the league in that category. Sixth in the power play. Eighth in the penalty kill. Mediocre at 17 in the goals category. Goals against goaltending. Martin Jones is not having a great season. He's really not. Uh, 2.93 goals against average. Save percentage just under 90. Yuck. And two shutouts on the season tied with Aaron Dell. Who, well, right now, I mean, well, he's not doing good either. He's 8-6 and six on the year. Martin Jones, 31-13 and 13 on the year. So he's got the win-loss record going for him. But the goaltending situation in San Jose, it's kind of like Calgary. You know, you got kind of a couple guys who are... Martin Jones is supposed to be good. And he's been good, but he's not been good this year. Um, this team is just like, screw it. Let's just score and kick everyone's ass and outscore everybody. But occasionally it bites them in the butt, and sometimes the scoring stops. And it sure happened in Columbus and Boston uh, the past week here. But um, somehow, you know, the way Minnesota's playing right now, I think they're going to beat the Sharks again. I do. Um, the Sharks are very, they're kind of a streaky, up and down type of team. Minnesota will be starting a back to back again with, uh, nope, San Jose will be starting a back to back with Minnesota and Winnipeg. So, an interesting uh, up north type of, uh, bold north type of uh, two step there. Well, the bold north two step, they probably will call it. Let's look at the last five. Uh, four nothing loss at Columbus. Again, very strong team still. They beat Detroit the next night. It's the uh, Sharks on Feb 24, 5 to 3. The Sharks got, uh, have had some, some significant time off since then, but uh, still, it is what it is. <clears throat> March the yep yeah, on the twenty sixth of February at Boston four to one yikes the Bruins are playing very well this year March the first five to three win over the ever streaky bipolar Colorado Avalanche that team will beat you seven to one and you'll beat them five to three you know I mean it's just how it is with that Cal Colorado team they're really bipolar uh, Chicago who had their hot run it's boy it's ran out of gas pretty quickly here. The Sharks beat them 5-2 to two most recently. Then four days off, they will play the Montreal Canadiens tonight. Montreal Canadiens, two days later, St. Louis, and two days later after that, on March 11th, the San Jose Sharks host. No, they head to Minnesota. I think the Wild win, and I think Minnesota goes 2-1 and one this week. What do you think of that? I think four points this week once again. Hopefully. Hopefully, I think Minnesota gets four out of six points in this three. A... Four to two, four to three win over the Sharks. Maybe it'll go to OT. Maybe Spurgeon will score a game winner or uh, Donato again or Thomas Hurdle. I I don't know, but I think the most likely guy to score against the San Jose Sharks 
is Eric Halla. No, <laughs> I'm just teasing. I wish it was. I wish Eric Halla was still on this team. I would have been picking him. I, I got a feeling, but uh, I, I would have had a feeling because he, he had some good games against this club. Um, the most likely guy to score for Minnesota over the Sharks. Let's go with Spurgeon. I think he's going to score something very important. Maybe the game winner puts the Wild ahead, helps us win, or maybe gets it done in overtime. Something along those lines. But I believe Jared Spurgeon will score a very significant goal. And Minnesota wins this 4-3 to three over the San Jose Sharks. Devin Dubnik and that, of course. So a 2 and one week, four points for Minnesota. Let's look at the prospects as the college tournaments are beginning. And as per usual, we will go to Iowa to start things out. And of course, all the yeah, stats are final now in college as we're heading into uh, the tournaments and all that. It's going to be interesting. Minnesota versus Michigan this weekend as uh, the possibility begins. Uh, Minnesota stomped Arizona State last week, and I'm off topic already. Cal O'Reilly leading the club with... Uh, <laughs> I'm not getting ahead of myself anyway. For Iowa, Cal O'Reilly's been spectacular in the AHL. Had that little tease a couple of weeks ago, and things didn't work out for him, unfortunately. Boy, oh boy. Earlier this week on Monday, uh, Sunday, pardon me, Sunday night, Brendan Mennell, five assists. Five assists for Brendan Mennell. Leads the club again with a plus 13. I guess Gerald May, who passed him. I can't believe it. 14. He's a plus 14. And Brendan Mennell has been unbelievable this year. Only two goals, but he's looking like Eric Carlson right now for the uh, Iowa Wild as they're continuing to make their playoff push. Sam Honest had a three-point game there. One goal and two assists. 26 points now for Sam Honest in 43 games. Dmitry Sokolov added a couple goals in the three-game span here this past week. 12 goals on the season now for Sokolov, who is still a minus seven on the fourth line for the Iowa Wild. But 24 points, 12 goals, 12 assists for Sokolov. Playing more of a team game, this and that so to speak. Mason Shaw has been chipping in a couple points here and there. He actually got his fifth goal of the season this past week. Now 27 total points on the year, but a five or six game, five assist game for Brennan Mantel over the uh, Ontario Reign. That was unbelievable. Again, that is the Los Angeles Kings AHL affiliate. Quite a bit of traveling there from Toronto area, the, the Toronto area, well, Ontario area anyway, over to uh, <laughs> Los Angeles, but it is what it is. Great game for Brennan Mendel and a 5-3 to three victory for the Iowa Wild. But nice to see some of the prospects contributing. Louis Belpedio added his fifth goal of the season this past week. Now 18 points for him. Will Biden, it's been a long time. He's been a bit of a, bit of a drought the past month, unfortunately. It is what it is. Susie hasn't scored a point in a month or so as well. So that's a little bit frustrating, but generally speaking, some really nice games, some really nice performances for some of the young guys here that you hope could be on the Minnesota Wild roster in a year or two. Sokolov again, adding a couple goals this week. So good, after another massive drought for him. He's been streaky off and on this season. But Belpedio, obviously. Belpedio and Menel, those are the two best defensemen on this team, without a doubt. Uh, Menel has just been unbelievable. And still only 21 years of age. Very, very cool to see Brennan Mendel be as productive as he is. Again, a beautiful story last season coming in. Man, very exciting. <laughs> very exciting. Only 20 years of age in Brennan Mendel's case coming in from uh, Woodbury, Minnesota. Played for St. Thomas and then boom. Uh, very productive last year, but this year a couple of quiet stretches, but generally speaking, extremely productive. And again, that five assist game and some great plays against the Ontario Reign. Very, very exciting for all of us that uh, follow MNW prospects. Huge shout out to them. We're going to give that, we're going to keep that coming. I'm an admin on that page and uh, Pavel Bunnett's been adding some new people as well to that page. We'll get to that in a moment if humanly possible. Uh, when I look at the college rankings a teeny tiny bit, again, Minnesota heading into the Big Ten tournament against Michigan. Hopefully the, the uh, Gophers can get the job done. Sweeping Arizona State despite them playing a little bit like uh, Garnett Hathaway this past week, trying to injure players pretty much for Minnesota. Getting a little bit, uh, just a little bit rough around the edges. I, I don't know what the hell that was. I, I like the Sun Devils, and then now nobody likes them. That <laughs> didn't take long, did it? Oh, it is what it is. It's sad. Sad but true. Sad but true. At the end of the day. Mr. Uh, Jack Sadick will be finishing a senior season one way or another coming up, hopefully in the, big, in the uh, NCAA tournament. 18 total points. Very nice year. Doubling his point total last year. Four goals. Ties a career high from his sophomore season. 14 assists. 18 
points on the year. Great finish for Jack Stadick, the future Iowa Wild at the very least. He's the same age as Brendan Mendel, so still a nice future ahead of him. Brandon DeHame, their, their club is going to have a chance to get to the Frozen Four this year, I suppose, uh, as Providence has been very strong this year. Staying in the single digits in the rankings, career high for him, 28 points. Nine of them goals for Providence in his junior season. Is he going to come out early, or is he going to stay for his senior year? I'm guessing he'll stay for his senior year, but who knows? We'll see what happens at that. Ivan Lodnia, who missed so much time earlier in the season, finally getting a couple games in and getting a couple points here. Now he's at 39 on the season, 35 points, or 35 games for Niagara this year. Good, good performance for him. He's at over a point a game now. Ivan Laden, yeah, I thought he was going to make it on the Iowa this year, but apparently back to juniors and, again, missed a ton of time, which was ever so frustrating, I'd have to say. Uh, Nick Boca, his uh, collegiate career wrapping up, at least the regular season part of it as well. His senior year, just like Jack Stadick, didn't get to the career high that he had in his freshman year with 10 assists. He did get a career high in goals, though. Nine total points for Nick Boca, and he will be playing against uh, Jack Stadick and the Gophers coming up this uh, coming up this weekend. As the Big Ten playoffs begin, very, very cool. And hopefully the Gophers, again, can get the job done. Jack McBain stuck at 13 points on the year. Sam Henches might win the national championship this year with St. Cloud State in his rookie season. Well, rookie season, his freshman year. 16 total points, added a couple last weekend after a pretty long drought. Eight goals, eight assists. Nice, solid freshman year for Sam Henches. Seventh-round pick in the twenty. 18 draft. Last year's second, uh, seventh round pick, the year before anyway, Nick Swaney, 2017 in his sophomore year, and he's already got his national championship, so will will the, will a wild seventh round pick win a national championship again? I don't like St. Cloud a whole lot. I, I don't. God bless you out there that do. It is what it is. I'm a Gopher fan. Duluth, I'm a little more okay with. There's just something about St. Cloud. <laughs> they bug me a little bit, but God bless Sam Hedges. If he gets it, that'd be cool, but and maybe it will be the case. Maybe another seventh round pick for Minnesota wins the national championship. Of course, both of the guys out of Minnesota and playing for a Minnesota college. So nothing wrong with the Minnesota college winning a national title, I suppose. Nick Sweeney actually finishes one point less than last year, but way more goals this season than last year. Last year, only six goals, 16 assists for 22 points. This year, 13 goals, eight assists for 21 points. Expect Nick Sweeney to have a strong junior year next year, I'm guessing for Duluth. There's no chance he's coming out early <laughs> unless he had a spectacular year, which I don't think he did, but he had some big moments and some big plays that really helped uh, the Duluth Bulldogs compete. Uh, Connor DeWar continues his strong play in the juniors. Gotta love what he's bringing for Everett. The Everett silver tips of the WAHL. He's been unbelievable. 76 points among the elite leaders in that category. 34 of them goals for Connor DeWar. He's had some huge, huge performances for the <laughs> for the uh, Everett Silver Tips, Philip Johansson stuck at four points in forty-seven games. Again, first-round pick last year, twenty-fourth overall, right shot defenseman. Says stay at home as it gets, but very solid generally speaking. Unfortunately, though, he's a minus ten this season, so that's disappointing in his his uh, offensive output of four points this year. So obviously, we'll see what happens with him. Uh, Bryce Misley was a a subject of conversation last week. Helped uh, Pablo Bonet a bit with the article, you know, doing the editing. I'm basically the editor for MNW player, MNW prospects, pardon me. That's the, uh, it got renamed last fall. Thanks to uh, Pablo Bonet, who's uh, leading the way there out of the Czech Republic. Bryce Misley, yep, he's just not been producing points, but at least he scored goals. He had only five assists last year, a left shot center. He's still only 19 years old, though. That's the good part about Bryce Misley. So still a chance for something. He turns 20 on the 5th of September. Same? Wow. <laughs> he's 19 years younger than Marcus the Forecaster. That's my good old friend. Born in 1980, September the 5th. Yep, we're, that's my generation. I'm 1979 officially. Bryce Misley definitely has struggled, but uh, again, conversation, good conversation on Minnesota Wild Hardcore and MNW Prospects. Uh, Misley definitely has struggled, but again, a team around him has not been that good. Left shot center is Bryce Misley. Definitely does a lot of the dirty work that doesn't show up in the stat sheet, this and that, and hopefully he could get a better team around him, or maybe if he has to, change schools. 
University of Vermont did make it to the Frozen Four in 2009, if you can believe that. So, I mean, they, they've been a factor. And I have nothing against the University of Vermont. I, I like that, the East Coast a little bit. I like these, these East Coast schools. And a state like Vermont, you don't hear about so much. There, there's so much history and, and the, just the Vermont uh, maple syrup, all that thought process. It sounds so cool. And it's like a beautiful place. And I don't know. You want to see the, the University of uh, Vermont step up a bit. And hopefully there'll be a better team around uh, Bryce Misley next season. The fourth round pick, 2017, 116th overall. So still got a chance. I mean, who knows? Hopefully he doesn't end up like some of the other college players that just completely disappeared. Like, uh, what was his name? Where is he? Where is he? I was just, oh yeah, a Avery Peterson. Gosh, it's been that long. He completely disappeared. Uh, Lewis Nanny completely disappeared. That was sad. You know, they just stopped playing. So sometimes that's just how it is. They don't want to play anymore and they give up, so to speak. And I I'm, Hoping, I mean, yeah, I mean, Bryce Misley's young enough. I think there's something still there, still something there for him. And obviously Nick Sweeney playing on a national championship caliber team, even though they didn't have a great uh, regular season record a year ago, they still went on and won it all. And he was a factor for that team, was uh, Nick Sweeney. Got to love him. Got to love what Nick Sweeney brings in a big way. Um, let's look at this a little bit. Uh, MNW Prospects officially giving them a shout-out right now. Again, that's a page I'm a big part of. Pavel Bunet uh, bringing Justin on board. Where is he? Uh, but he was uh, introducing him. He was bringing... Where was he? Okay, well, the guy's uh, his name is Justin. I need to look at his profile. Justin Ryan. Oh, okay, yeah, I've seen that name. Justin Ryan back. So welcome on board, Justin. I will bring him on board as well. Thank you. I want to welcome on board to uh, MNW Prospects. Again, encourage all of you to join that page, and I know a lot of you have, especially from a Minnesota Wild Hardcore, as Bubba Bunnett is a admin on Minnesota Wild Hardcore, so nobody had a problem with him mentioning his page and, and uh, encouraging people to come and join the page and also check out my podcast, because I'm a part of MNW Prospects. I tend to post uh, links to uh, the page, links to the Minnesota the Brave the Wild show, anyway, on Minnesota Wild Prospects. Encourage all of you to join that page and talk about the prospects. Enjoy the conversation. It's more than worth it. And I love to talk about prospects on this show. And that's why uh, my brother-in-law, from, from my brother's my brother's marriage, anyway. So I'm like <laughs> my... <laughs> I'm like my brother's brother-in-law, so to speak. And that's... that's uh, yeah, it's uh, from uh, Chance Costick, who introduced me to... Uh, uh, Pablo Bonet at the same time, in a sense. So that's kind of how things go there. My brother, obviously, marrying uh, Chance Costick's sister, Clover, at the end of the day. So that's how that connection started. And, of course, David Costick, massive hockey fan for many, many years, uh, starting out of Pennsylvania, ultimately a North Stars fan, along with, uh, again, Chance Costick. That's the uh, that's uh, my brother's father-in-law and David Costick. All parts of Minnesota Wild Hardcore there. Chance Costick, one of the big boys, one of the admins, and they pass out those Minnesota Wild Hardcore patches. So huge shout out there. Again, the connections are great. The hockey community is awesome in this town, and these two pages rule the world. So Minnesota Wild Hardcore and of course M and W Prospects do join both of those pages. Massive shout out to both of you. Uh, also, please join uh, the Twitter account at Brave the Wild. At Brave the Wild is a Twitter account. Please give that a follow and join in the conversation. Would be greatly appreciated. Talked about Brad Hunt last week on there. That was fun. And then, of course, the uh, <clears throat> the Facebook page for Brave the Wild, facebook.com forward slash Brave the Wild dot Minnesota, or just look up Brave the Wild Minnesota Wild podcast in the search bar. That's how you can get on board there. There's the phone lines, 209-736-7877, 209-736-7877. It is a voicemail. Do treat it as such. Mention you're calling in to Brave the Wild. Your statement, shout-out, comment, question, and opine. It's a three-minute limit, so be aware of that. It, it'll automatically cut you off, which is a bummer. But again, just be aware of that, and there won't be a problem. There's the call now button on the Facebook page, which does the same thing. Does the same thing. Goes to the same phone line through Facebook Messenger. So as long as you're connected to Wi-Fi or cellular data, whatever, you'll be fine. No long distance, any of that kind of nonsense. Uh, and then there's the part that I recommend the most. The most, uh, <laughs> the most, I think, efficient route to get on this show with your voice. Use the free voice recording uh 
application on any smart device on the planet. There's bajillions of them, and usually there's some built into the, the smart device itself, voice recorder, whatever. Treat it like a phone call. Just press record. Treat it like a phone call. Save it and send it to Paladino Live at Yahoo.com. Paladino Live at Yahoo.com. And you will be on the air with me. Keep it to around five minutes or whatever, but nothing wrong with that. Again, mention which show you're calling into, which is, of course, Brave the Wild. Thanks again. God bless all of you. Hopefully Minnesota can get the job done. Maybe we sweep everybody, but uh, let's go two and one. That would be nice. Maybe we beat Tampa and screw around with Florida or San Jose. But as long as you come out ahead with a winning record, that's the recipe if you want to make the postseason. Again, thank you, Pavel Burnett and uh, Justin Ryan. Welcome on board the page as well. Big shout-outs to Jim Maddell. Sarah Maddell, uh, Chance Costick, David Costick, and of course Chad Walski, great guy out there as well. Thanks again for the conversation, and we will talk to you in a week.